Welcome back to NPTEL course on game theory. In earlier sessions we have discussed zero sum games. Now we will switch our focus to non-zero sum games. So in a zero sum game what we have is that the sum of the two payoffs the player 1s and player 2 payoff is always 0. In a non-zero sum games we do not take that and they can be different. In fact one example that we have seen earlier is coordination game which is a non-zero sum game. Let me recall the coordination game first. So what is this coordination game? In fact the version that we are going to see is known as a battle of success. Let us say there are two players, let us assume wife and husband. So there are two choices, one is going to a movie or going to a shopping. let us say the player 2 is husband, player 1 is wife. Okay. If the wife prefers shopping compared to movie and husband prefers movie to shopping. So if they go to husband goes to movie he gets a higher benefit whereas wife gets more benefit if she goes to shopping. But the most important thing is that the benefit they will get only when they go to go together. So, so when both of them go to movie for example the husband is going to get 4 and let us say wife is going to get 2, 4 and both of them go to shopping 4 and 2 this is their benefit and then the other things can be any numbers appropriately taken but right now let us say I am I am taking zeros. So, we can make different numbers but let us say. So, this is a game where the sum of the payoffs is not 0. This is an example of a non-zero sum game which we have seen earlier. So, in fact both going to movies and equilibrium both going to sh shopping is also an equilibrium. So, as I have been pointing out since earlier in the game theory the most important thing is that the players are making their decisions simultaneously. They do not know what the other is going to do it. So under that is a very important thing. If both of them know what they are doing it that becomes an optimization problem, but the game flavor will be lost in that, in that situation. So here the most important thing once again I elaborate is I stress upon is that they are choosing their decisions simultaneously independent of others that is a very important. So, this is a, an example of a non-zero sum game. Now we will see another very very important example which is known as a prisoner's dilemma. The prisoner's dilemma this example is framed by Merrill Flood and Melvin Drescher working at Rand Corporation in 50s and it is Alan Tucker who formalized the version that we are going to see now. So in this game there are two individuals who have committed a serious crime both of them are handed. But there is no criminal evidence. So the police has no evidence that they have done but they believe strongly that they have done it. So they can actually try persuading those guys asking them to confess against the other. If they can confess then that is going to help them. So that is basically the situation here. So what the interrogators do is the following thing. They are isolated in separate cells and they cannot communicate each other and then they give the following choices what the choices are. If you confess and your friend refuses to confess you will be released from custody and receive immunity as a state's witness. Okay. If you confess and your friend refuses to confess then you will be released and your friend will be 
prosecuted using your evidence. If you refuse to confess and your friend confess a symmetric situation reversing the roles and both refuses to confess then the police has they do not have a sufficient evidence so therefore they can only give a very little punishment. But if both of you confess then that means we have evidence against each and then they get a some reduced term of imprisonment. So, that is basically the case here and now this situation is a two player strategic farm game. So, there are two choices D is for defection that means betraying your fellow criminal by confessing. The D means you are you have confessed that this crime is uh, done and then in a sense this is also betraying the your fellow person. And C is here means cooperation that means you are cooperating with the police here. C means cooperation, cooperation with the fellow criminal and you, do, you are not confessing the crime. So, this situation you can see it as a picture here. So, there is a picture here in this you have a two players it is a two by two matrix game both are defecting both the players that means the player 1 is defecting against player 2 and player 2 is defecting against player 2 that means both have confessed their crime. Therefore, the police has sufficient evidence against both. So, in this case 6 and 6 are going to be the years of imprisonment. And if you if player 1 defects and player 2 confesses then player 1 is immediately released and player 2 gets 10 years punishment. And similarly if player 1 con confesses are here in this case uh, it is a cooperation he is cooperating with the player 2 and player 2 defects the player 1 then 10 and 0 that means player 1 is getting 10 years of imprisonment and player 2 is getting nothing. And both are cooperating each other both players are cooperating each other then there is not much evidence for the police therefore both of them get only one year of imprisonment. So, this is going to be the situation here. So, if you look at it so for what is going to be the equilibrium here in this setup. Now remember here people are minimizing because this is a prison man. So, this is a cost. So, therefore, uh, so far in the zero sum games we are assuming the players are maximizers, but here we are we have a situation where both the players are minimizing their imprisonment. So, no player would like to get 10 years imprisonment. So, therefore, clearly we can see that 10 0 and 0 10 these are not going to be a equilibrium here we can easily verify it. What about DD? Is this equilibrium? So, let us look at it. The way to see is that like in zero sum games we have some if once let us say player 1 has fixed to D what is best for player C? The player 2. Once I know that the player 1 has used D for player 2 he has only two choices D and C for D he is getting 6 and for C he is getting 10 years of imprisonment. So, therefore, D is better. Similarly, when player 2 decides to play D player 1 the best is to play D certainly therefore, this is a Nash equilibrium. Okay. So, this is all thought, pro thought process the way it happens is that the player 1 will think suppose if I do not defect if I do not defect that means let me say I cooperate with my fellow criminal then if I cooperate what is going to happen to me that means 10 0 and 1 1 I will get either 10 years or 1 year. Can I assume that the other player cooperates if other player 
why will he cooperate? If he cooperates, he will get 1 year and if he does not cooperate, he is going to get 0. Therefore, not cooperating is better for him. Therefore, he will never cooperate. So, therefore, if I am cooperating, I assume that my fellow criminal will also, he will never cooperate, he will only defect. So, therefore, for me cooperating is not a good choice, therefore, defecting is better. The same thought process will be with the other criminal and he will also think the same way and therefore, defect happens. So, therefore, this is essentially what I was telling earlier that about the rationality. Okay, people are rational, they maximize their benefits. The selfish behavior is very important here. So, using that rationality behavior, rationality we know that DD is going to be a Nash equilibrium. So, this is essentially what happens here. So, DD is a Nash equilibrium, but here is an interesting situation. The CC when both of them cooperate they are getting only one year imprisonment, but that is not a Nash equilibrium they will never play CC. So, this is exactly what I have been saying. The thought process of the player, if he will always think that if I cooperate with my fellow criminal, the other player is going to defect. Therefore, defecting is better and a symmetric nature this happens and therefore, the play, uh, pair of strategies DD is going to be a Nash equilibrium. Okay. So, here are the few lessons that we need to see. So, there is no dominate dominant strategy. We have used the domination earlier in zero sum games. If a specific column is dominated by some other column, you do not want to use that column. So, if a domination is possible, you will play it. But if there is no domination, what we are going to look at is the thought process. If I play this, what my opponent will think about and how he will react to it. And then based on that, we do it. That is exactly the way we did it. For example, if you look at it, uh, this penalty kick, in a penalty kick there are two players. Now, if the one player knows that I, I am very good on a left side, then other guy will certainly going to wait for me at the left corner. So, he will for me it is not good to play the left corner. So, this is essentially the thought process that we have seen earlier. So, this is a good example which illustrates that aspect. Okay. So, now the most important question that comes here is that is there a way to make the prisoners cooperate. Now, this situation arises at many many instances. So, I would like you to think about various situations. One example for example is a when two neighboring houses when you look at it, when they are cleaning it they try to throw the dirt on the other side thinking that their side is cleaner, but other side also will do the same thing the end result is both are getting dirt outside their house. This is a common phenomena that we observe in many many situations. Now, in such situations the most important question is how can we get the cooperation. So, this is a, a non-trivial question which we may not discuss in this course much, but this is a question that uh, economists, biologists, behavioral economists and several people have been studying. Okay. We will now see another example which is known as a Kurnos duopoly. What is a duopoly? Duopoly is a situation where there are two firms who wants to control the market for a certain commodity. So, we are considering a market and there is a commodity that two firms are selling and they want to control the situation. Now, when there are more than two firms, we call it as an oligopoly. So, the duopoly is actually to decide how firms adjust their production to maximize their profits. The duopoly problem is studied by Kurno very, very long back 1838 his work can be seen as a precursor to Nash equilibrium. So, sometimes in economics the Nash equilibrium in particularly in this oligopolis framework they call Kurno Nash equilibrium. So, let us look at how this is. There are two forms 1 and 2. 
they are producing some product and they sell the product on a same market. Both of them are operating in the same market. The price of the product decreases proportionally to the supply. So, let us assume Q i is the number of items produced by company i. Q0 and P0 are the highest reasonable production level and highest possible price. Price when the total quantity produced is Q that is Q1 plus Q2. So, when form 1 is producing Q1 and form 2 is producing Q2 the total quantity available in the market is Q1 plus Q2 which is, let me say this is Q written by Q. Now, the price when the total product available in the market is Q that is given by P of Q which is given by P0 into 1 minus Q by Q0 that is this. So, if the quantity Q increases then this becomes this reduces therefore, price reduces and if quantity available Q is smaller the price increases. Now, if the product available the quantity available in the market is bigger than Q naught the price is going to be 0. This is one of the very simple example of a price quantity. We assume the, the cost of producing a product is C and we assume that in fact it is not just assume the price of the product can never be less than the marginal cost. So, therefore, P0 less than or equals to C is a meaningless thing. So, therefore, we always make sure that P0 is bigger than C. Now, strategies of each forms now are Q1 and Q2 both can be taken from the interval 0 and Q0. 0 is the least that they can produce, Q0 is the maximum they would like to produce. So, therefore, both the forms have same possibilities. So, Q1 and Q2 they will choose simultaneously and what are the pay payoffs? If form 1 is choosing Q1, form 2 chooses Q2, the price of the product is P of Q and a form is producing Qi therefore, his profit is going to be Qi into P of Q and he also incurs a cost that C into Qi. So, we reduce that. So, therefore, this is going to be the payoff function of the form I. Once we know this one, now we are in a game setup. So, therefore, there are two firms, they are making their decisions and they have a payoff functions. Now, each firm's objective is to maximize their profit. So, what exactly will they do? So, let us do this one. So, as I we have been doing it earlier, we look at what is known as a best response. When player 2, here player 2 means form 2, form 2 let us say he decides a strategy Q2, then what should form 1 do? So, let us assume that when Q2 is produced by form 2, let us say Q1 hat is going to be the quantity that form 1 is going to produce and this Q1 hat should maximize the profit. So, what it means is that this Q1 hat should be maximizing the form 1's profit so when form 2 is producing q2 let us say q2 is fixed then form 1 should produce q1 which maximizes this pi 1 q1 q2 now if i look back this the profit function is given by this one so, I will write it here again pi 1 q 1 q 2 is nothing but p 1 of q into q 1 minus c into q 1. So, p 1 q is a, is the price curve that is given in the previous slide and this is going to be the profit that player 1 is getting. So, player we are looking at the maximization. So, we use the first order derivative with respect to q 1 and equate it to 0. If you equate it to 0, so what you are going to get is p 1 q plus q 1 into the derivative of p 1 with respect to q 1 minus c. You calculate that you do and then equate it with 0, 
then you are going to get this much. So, this is a simple calculus which I have not done and in a similar fashion if you look at the firm 1's decision and let us say it is fixed at q1, if firm 1 fixes at q1, firm 2 will produce q2 hat which should maximize the his profit. And then if you do the same analysis with pi 2, q2 hat is going to be this much. Now the another very important point we have done only the first order analysis that means the gradient is equal to 0 then uh, how do we know that if the differential is 0 then it need not be maximizer. The corresponding critical point need not be maximizer. But in this case what is going to happen is that if you look at the price curve, price curve is a linear, price curve is linear in Q and the profit if you look at it, it has the product terms Q1 into P1 Q minus C Q1. You can actually verify that this is a convex in the variable Q1. Similarly, the profit of player 2 is also a concave in the play in the profit in the decision variable of player 2. Therefore, the concavity together with the first order conditions will ensure that the Q1 hat and Q2 hat that we have got here is going to be the maximizers. Therefore, if when player 2 fixes to Q2, Q1 hat is the maximizer of the form 1's profit and similarly when Q1 is fixed by form 1, Q2 hat is going to be the maximizer of the form 2. Now what is an equilibrium? Equilibrium is such that Q1 star and Q2 star is the equilibrium such that when player 2 fixes at Q2 star, Q1 star should be the best response to Q2 star. Similarly, if player 1 fixes at Q1 star, Q2 star should be the best response. So, such a thing is Kurno equilibrium it is called and of course in the modern language this is a exactly a Nash equilibrium and that is this is the reason why it is also called Kurno Nash equilibrium. So, what we get here is that we need to consider the following thing the equations are the following thing q1 hat of q2 star should be q1 star. Similarly, q2 hat of q1 star this should be q2 star. These are the conditions that we have and if you rewrite those conditions if you put the q1 hat functions thing you are going to get these equations. Okay, these are two equations and Q1 and Q2 are unknowns here and if you solve these things what we get is exactly this. The Q1 star and Q2 star are given by Q0 by 3 into 1 minus C by P0 and under this the payoffs are also going to be exactly same. Pi1 Q1 star Q2 star is same as Pi2 Q1 star Q2 star which is given by this. So, th this is a Kurno duopoly. Of course, the same problem one can actually do with instead of two forms some arbitrary number of forms multiple forms then it is an oligopoly we can start doing it. Now this is an example where the firms are deciding the quantity to produce but it is exactly similar model where the firms are going to determine the price rather than the quantity. So that is known as a Bertrand model. So, in a Bertrand model the strategies are not the quantities but prices and the, quant the firm with a lower price captures the market. This firm sells the whole product and second one sells nothing. In case of equal prices the firm share market equal. So, the demand function now is if the price is fixed the demand function is given by Q of P which is nothing but Q naught into 1 minus P by P naught. If the price is higher the quantity that they are going to produce will be small and if the price is small they will produce higher. So, that is exactly captured by this demand function okay. and the payoff functions will be simply if P1 and P2 are the prices chosen by the firms it will be P1 minus C into QP1 is going to be the profit when firm 1 has a smaller price 
if both the prices are same they share if the price is higher. So, there is a small mistake here this is not P plus 1 this is a P 1. If the price is going to be higher then of course, the form 1 is not getting any thing similarly pi 2. So, the form 2's profit is also there and the similar exactly similar kind of conditions when the price has to be bigger than C that is a reasonable price C is the marginal cost. So, therefore, P 0 has to be bigger than C. So, therefore, uh, what is P 0? P 0 is the maximum price that they would like to consider if beyond P 0 they cannot sell anything. Now, therefore, the prices will be between C and P 0 then if you go through it then uh, we can actually solve the case and one by one we can verify the Nash equilibrium conditions then actually what happens that P 1 greater than P 2 cannot be best response to P 2. If a player is choosing P 2 the form 2 has decided a price P 2 then form 1 can never go beyond P 2. Okay. Similarly, for P if form 1 decides P 1 form 2 will never go beyond P 2. Okay. So, C is equals to P 2 less than P 1 less than or equals to P 0. In this case P 2 is not the best response to P 1 as choosing anything between C and P 1 yields a better payoff for form 2. So, this case cannot give a Nash equilibrium. So, likewise you can analyze all the situations and would like you to work out the details of this Nash equilibrium and you compute the Nash equilibrium in this setup. You will get a different framework than the Cournot's. Of course, there are a lot of differences between this Cournot and Bertrand we will not go into those aspects we only give this as a an examples of non-zero sum games. So, with this I will st stop this session and in the next session we will formally define the Nash equilibrium and uh, by uh, non-zero sum games and we proceed to prove the existence of Nash equilibrium.